If you are wondering, hmm, is this the not safe for work letters story? Yes. Yes, it is. Hello everyone, my name is Zairi and I'm gonna do my best to make this as child-friendly as possible. <laughs> but Egyptian mythology is just like that sometimes, I apologize. Let's go! The Contendings of Horus and Seth So we start the story in a bit of a struggle. Osiris, the father of Horus, was murdered by Seth, Osiris' brother. After that, Seth rules for a bit before Horus becomes old enough to take the throne. Which already happened, so the son of Osiris is knocking on Seth's throne like, hey, it's, it's my turn to rule. But Seth doesn't want to give up the power, so they bring it in front of the Council of the Gods. Most of the gods agree that the throne should go to young Horus, as he is the son of Osiris and should inherit it. Not to mention that Set was the one who killed Osiris in the first place. But Ra doesn't agree with the rest and feels like Set has way more experience and is overall stronger and better fit than young Horus. So because of that, the council agrees to send a letter to the goddess Neith to ask her opinion. Egyptian gods love paperwork, thought most of them all. Neith of course agrees that the throne should go to Horus, but they should compensate Set somehow with pretty ladies or something, just make him happy. But who wasn't happy was Ra, because he believed that Neith would agree with him and not the other way, so he does the adult thing and storms out. Oh, and also insults Horus's breath, apparently. <laughs> Hathor felt bad for her father, so she went to cheer him up into his tent. Her chiap plan worked, but in the worst way possible. She stripped in front of Ra, which gave him such a huge fit of laughter that he got into a better mood and returned to the council. Thank you for your sacrifice, Hathor. <laughs> At the council, both gods should present their case on why they should rule. Seth was basically hyping himself up as the coolest person, and the only two words Horus said were father and Osiris. Truly a hard battle. Isis, the mother of Horus, is like, this is going nowhere. Let's ask Atum, the big boss. And everybody agrees, under one circumstance, Isis cannot join them in the court of Atum. Of course, Isis is not dumb, so she transforms herself into a really old woman and easily sneaks onto the island where the court is. On the island, she transforms herself into a beautiful young maiden, and when Seth sees her, he's like, oh, oh wow, and immediately goes after her. She makes up a story about her and her son on a farm, which got taken over by a stranger. The story was basically mimicking the situation they were all in that moment. At the end of the story, Isis asks who should have the farm, her son or the stranger? And Seth, having like one brain cell, was like, of course your son should have it. At that point, Isis transformed herself again and went to tell Rav that Seth lost with his own words. At that point, Council was fully like, yeah, let Horus have it. But Seth, being a baby, challenged him to a hippo duel instead, as in, they're both hippos and the one who can stay underwater for longer wins. Truly a thrilling challenge. Isis, being a good mom, wants to help Horus by throwing a harpoon and hurting the desert god, but ultimately screws up with her harpoon and hits both him and Set after each other. You would think hitting Set is a good thing, but she felt sorry that she'd hit him because it is her brother after all. So she releases him and Horus storms out of the water, angry that she didn't help him enough. A little bit of a spoiled child if you ask me? Because right after that, he kills his mom and storms off. Set, angry because again, this is a family drama, and Isis was his sister, goes to find Horus and plugs his eyes out as a punishment. Honestly, this one goes to Set. After some time, Hathor finds sobbing, broken Horus and restores his eyes with some gazelle milk. Don't ask for details. Later, we find ourselves at a council yet again and Ra, already done with his whole thing, is like, can you just like, talk about it over dinner or something? And they do. Seth invited Horus over and they had a great time until they went to the bed together. Yeah, don't don't question it. Trying to stay YouTube friendly here, so let's say that Seth had some fun with Horus on the bed. But Horus was very cautious and didn't let Seth win, catching his... Why am I doing this? Prized collection? 
into his hands. He goes to cry to his mom, who is alive again, by the way, about Seth and his great evening plans. Isis cuts off Horace's hands, as one does, and then helps him collect his own prized collection. So she goes to Seth's garden and puts some of the prized collection onto a lettuce as it was Seth's favorite meal, which he later ate, and I guess enjoyed. Myths are crazy, man. <laughs> Later that day, in front of the council, Seth is like, Behold, he can't be your king because he let me use him as a woman. Horace told them that it's simply not true and that they should call upon their prize collections to know the truth. So Todd did just that because that's apparently one of his powers and they discovered that Seth has been lying because the prize collection of Horace was in his belly. Seth is just completely losing it at this point, and challenges Horace to one last challenge. They shall race with the stone boats. Yes, you heard that right. Guess who won if I tell you that Horace cheated and disguised wood as stone and Seth actually fully built a stone boat? Yeah, the, the boy won. At this point, the quarrel has been going on for like 80 years. So, some more paperwork shenanigans ensues, of course. This time it's Osiris himself, because he rules the underworld now. Osiris, of course, doesn't get why his son Horus is not king yet, and after some more paperwork, Seth is punished and the throne finally goes to Horus as the rightful ruler of all Egypt. The end. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, it really helps a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.